Baldy, what's going on? All right, it sounds yeah. like we got you back here from yeah, uh, Philadelphia now. International Airport. So uh, your your audio cut out when you were breaking down, you know, what the the Arizona Cardinals offense was able to do to kind of fix their red zone woes in the second half to have a perfect offensive second half. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the touchdown to James Conner, uh, to Carter, I mean, they were just good execution. I mean, it's a great catch by James Conner, uh, you know, from the five-yard line. They were able to punch it in and run it inside the red zone. So uh, anytime you can run it, you'd much rather run it than have to throw it. And so they took care of that. So um, you know, they were able to finish these drives, but mainly, mainly because uh, the guys up front, you know, played really, really well. Um, so as long as they play like that, um, I don't know. I mean, there's, they, they could win a lot of games. I mean, I don't know we're at the end right here, but I just thought I knew the offense line had been playing good. I, I, I told that to Monty on, on the sidelines pregame uh, before we announced the game, but I, I thought that they were playing well. I saw it in Pittsburgh. I saw it in games. I just, they put it all together though, up front. And really uh, it was impressive because the Eagles were coming at them with a lot of young players and they, they handled Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox and Nolan, you know, Nolan Smith and the guys that they were throwing at him. Yeah, the offensive line led the way for Kyler Murray, I think, to have a big second half. Baldy, talk to us about the difference in, in two halves from the Arizona Cardinal franchise quarterback because, you know, we were critical after the, you know, the pick six communicate miscommunication with Michael Wilson. For Kyler Murray to come out and play as well as he did in the second half in a hostile environment, backing up his head coach, the, the significance of that cannot be understated. Am I right? No, no. I mean, that, that's a devastating throw to Sidney Brown. And I don't know. I don't pretend to understand what Michael Johnson was supposed to do versus what Kyler saw. But you don't see many errors that egregious. But you didn't see any confrontation on the sideline. I don't know what was said between, uh, you know, between Jonathan and Kyler and, and Drew and, and Michael. It didn't look like there was any sort of big confrontation. But the best thing you could do is put that behind you and just go out there and, and get to the next drive. That's, you know, in some ways, Kyler's baseball background kind of helps him like that. That's what baseball yeah. players got to do. You got to put that at bat behind you. Go get your hit on the next bat bat or the next one. I, I felt like Kyler put that completely behind him. There's be some quarterbacks that would not have been able to be that easy about it and let it go like that without a confrontation. He just put it behind him, and they just went out and said, okay, let's, let's go make up for it in the next drive, and they did. Saw firsthand there, Kyler Murray's performance, the three touchdowns in the second half, 13 for 14, 133, uh, really had command. He was dealing on the, the go-ahead, the game-winning drive, had a big couple big plays to Greg Dorch. But, you know, is, should the Cardinals fans, you know, Jonathan Gannon was asked a couple times about his future this week and confirmed that Kyler's the guy going forward. Cardinals fans, you got to imagine they're excited about it now, seeing what they've seen from Kyler Murray just eight weeks in a new offense. Well, that's the thing, you know, eight weeks in a new offense with no off season and, and how he's had to get his seasoning and his timing by getting live reps and game reps. And, you know, a lot of guys struggle in that department. I mean, that was a, that was a great performance. That's I've seen Kyler play a lot of football games going back to Oklahoma. I mean, that's about as perfect a performance as you could get from Kyler. I mean, the, the throws on the outs, uh, you know, whether it was, um, you know, to Dorch or whoever it was, I mean, they were stick throws, and Pittsburgh and Philly's got some big guys up front. I mean, you know, Jordan Davis is six foot seven, and Fletcher's big. He got some big hands in his face. None of it seemed to really bother him at all. I, I mean, look, it's a great endorsement. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if it, in fact, is a true endorsement. I mean, you have to say those things, especially after a win like that as a head coach. Uh, you want to have his back, but you know, some of these decisions are business decisions. And sometimes it goes beyond X's and O's and what you think about a player. But that was a strong endorsement that Jonathan gave to Kyler Murray. And it probably is a good thing as they try to build around him and add more pieces to this offense for next year. You know, Baldy, save for like a, a, a Christian McCaffrey, the running back position in the NFL is, is not as in vogue as it once was. It's kind of a forgotten role. Yet you see the impact that James Conner has had to this team got an outside chance to have a thousand yards rushing this year while missing a month's worth of time and just the, the emotional and physical presence that he gives the Cardinals I mean talk to me about what you saw from number six who, who's quickly becoming an all-time great signing for this franchise 
Barry well, it starts. It, it just starts with the character of James Conner and what kind of person he is. Anybody that beats him just knows he's how authentic he is, and and then the work ethic that he puts in behind it. Uh, you you know you you can't have enough of those types of self starters on your team, and that's what James is. And there's one thing to be a self starter, to be a leader, but you have to perform. I mean, his performance was outstanding, and yeah. it was in Pittsburgh, and it was against the Cowboys this year. And you can pick. You know, five games out this year where he was he was the best running back on the field. And so – and I don't think he's slowing down. Like, I know, you know, the years are starting to add up a little bit. But I feel like he's got good years left in him. And, you know, when you – when Monty is, and, and Jonathan are trying to identify core people to build this franchise around, I can't imagine James Conner not being a big part of it. And the conversation going to many other players before you mentioned James Conner. Isn't it weird, though? And I don't know if you're allowed to be complimentary being a Duke Duke Blue Devil of a North Carolina running back like Michael Carter, but he was able to come in there and even give him more juice when he would spell James Conner. It looks like Michael Carter, the Cardinals, found somebody late in the season uh, and benefited from the Jets parting ways with him. You know, it's interesting. I I had work at the Jets this morning, and I was up there um, in Florham Park, and I, I saw a bunch of, you know, the guys, you know, that were coming going from one meeting to another. And I just, I just mentioned, you know, like Dow, like Michael Carter played really good on Sunday in Philadelphia. They, they all love him. But even before Brees Hall was drafted, I mean, Michael Carter led the running backs in New York um, in every single drill. He was the first one in line. He led the drill. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, when he came out with Javante Williams out of North Carolina, it was really a question like, which one would you rather have? Um, because he's got that type of ability. And to see the guys make – he just didn't have an offense line in New York last year or this year that played anything like what he played in front of this year. I mean, running backs got to get the line of scrimmage pretty much clean before they can do their thing and use their quickness and their vision and suddenness that he has. And he put it on display. It was a, it was a good compliment to James Conner on Sunday. You, you think about this offensive line, Baldy. We just heard the news today that DJ Humphreys has unfortunately torn his ACL. But you know, I've made the argument, I think it's the MVP – of this team in terms of the, the unit itself. Like, why do you think this kind of cast of, you know, misfit toys with, you know, afterthought free agents, sure. They've got a couple first round tackles, yellow Frold Holt. Nobody knew who he was. Will Hernandez on a two year deal. Like how, how is this team doing what they're doing up front? Is it coaching? Is it a combination of factors? Like, cause what you mentioned about Philadelphia and the who's who on their defensive line, first rounder after first rounder, the Cardinals, this is the best run-dominant team I've ever seen them have. Well, some of these guys needed a chance. Like, Yeldon needed a chance. You know, he's, he was in Cleveland, and, you know, they were they were pretty much loaded, and he was a backup, and he didn't get a chance. But he's, he's very athletic, as we've seen. And he handled Jordan Davis on his nose with, with little difficulty. It, it was an impressive performance. You know, and then you look at Will Hernandez. I told Will on Sunday, I've known him since he came out of Texas, El Paso, but – I told Will, like, they still haven't found a right guard in New York. Like, the one thing about Will Hernandez, honestly, he never misses a game. Like, he, he and, you know, he has the same mentality every day. Um, he played every single game at Texas El Paso. Um, he played every game in New York. He's played every game here. Like, you can't get him off the field. Now, he's, he's a little bit stiff. I mean, people would say that. He would say that. But what he makes up for in stiffness, he makes up with incredible strength. Just yeah. a tower of strength. You know, and so, you know, he lives in a weight room. He believes in all that kind of stuff. Paris has been better than I thought he was going to be. Uh, he was telling me, like, how much he really enjoys studying Lane Johnson. How he wants to model his game after him. And, you know, he's played every snap this year. I mean, that, you know, that's, that's impressive. You know, you come in, you play every snap. You know, and you, you take your lumps. You go up against some of these guys, you take your lumps a little bit. But you learn from them. And I think he's done that. Um, DJ has been outstanding, but I think, uh, you know, maybe a hidden part, just knowing Kelvin Beecham the way I do, like that guy is glue. Like, you know, he can play right side, he can play left side. He's a, a natural captain. He was a captain when he was at SMU. You know, he's a natural behind the scenes leader without being rah, rah. Like, I think you go in a room and Kelvin Beecham is there. He kind of makes you straighten up a little bit, just the way he conducts himself. But I think they have the building blocks of being a really, really, um, special group right now. Wow. 
I mean, you pointed it out to us early in the season, and like we've seen it in the practice, but I love the tag team duo on the right side of Will Hernandez and Paris Johnson Jr. They're just fun. And you mentioned like they love to go out there and bulldoze in a run game. Let me ask you this, like, because I want to get your thoughts. You were there. Uh, the the move for Jonathan Gannon in game, because we know about how competitive his squad is, but the move to for the onside kick and how well that played out for him. In real time, did you did you understand like what what he was trying to do there? Whether he was gonna the team was gonna recover it or just make a short field to maybe save some clock? See, I think we talked about it in the booth, and we thought, um, you know, even if the Eagles scored, they're gonna have time left on the clock to go down and answer the score. The last thing you wanted maybe is to kick it off and the Eagles melt the clock with an 80 yard drive, and so. I haven't talked to Jonathan, and I don't know if anybody asked him that question, but we felt like that was part of the decision to go for the onside kick, that even if they don't recover it and the Eagles get a 50-yard field, um, they're gonna, there's still going to be time left on the clock. And, I've, you know, as the Eagles, you know, they got the holding call, they got backed up, and they yeah, obviously, you know, didn't do very much with outside of the first pass to A.J. Brown. You know, they didn't do much with it, and they left the Arizona Cardinals time to go down the field. And so if he thought like that, I thought that was next level. Absolutely. Baldy, you're always next level. We appreciate your time today on the road, traveling, getting us the inside, the all city NFL podcast with Brian Baldinger. Baldy, hope to talk to you next week as the Arizona Cardinals put a bow on year one of JG and company this Sunday against the Seahawks. Yeah. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you next week. Appreciate yep. you.